Martin Tagarva. This is Will Sanchez. Thank you for tuning in. My special guest today is Benu Palus. Last year at the Jackrabbits, when I was with my group, the Classic Rabbits, we spotted Benu walking in. Benu sported the brightest smile <laughs> that we were completely thrown in. It reminded me of my favorite saying, hire the smile. I knew then that I had to have Banu on my Gotta Run TV show. I'm thrilled to have Banu on. Thank you for having me, Will. Let's go back to Jack Rabbit's on the Upper East Side because yep. it closed. I know. Yeah, it's it's still kind of, it's still kind of a bummer for a lot of runners there who really love the the location on there and the community. I think especially that we were, were fostering there because I'd been at that store working there uh, for like five years. Uh, so it was yeah. So and plus like all the friends I had connections I'd made there. Just it felt it was like it was it was really it was really upsetting on there a little bit there. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. I think you'd lost your lease to a soul cycle to a cycling club? That's what, yeah. It was pretty unfortunate. I remember finding out the news probably around a month before in February um, and then just kind of, and then a couple of days later that's when they announced it. But yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a bummer. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was there the opening weekend. I had uh, Mary Arnold here as a guest. Oh, cool. And yeah. she was the uh, opening manager for yeah. the store. I think it was her first managerial experience with Jack Rabbits before, you know, she rose up the ranks. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of fond memories for me because I was there at the beginning and I was there last year. I was taking, I was recovering from an injury, a long time injury, and I took your 5K class. And I, I was there with my group and that's when uh, you walked in and uh, really have that that smile, that very welcoming. <laughs> so credit to Jack Rabbit. It's good to give you enough notice. So I think you you're not currently with Roadrunners, right? Yeah, it was funny. I think like as soon as I found out, uh, almost right away. I think like that same day, I started like almost immediately looking for for something, and I found I think like New York Roadrunners had an opening for uh, a position at the Run Center, uh, right. and just like right away, okay. just submitted that, and then right, yeah. Right. Well, before we we go back to the Rent Center. Let's uh, let's introduce you to our audience. I was born in Coney Island Hospital in Brooklyn, New York, uh, and then two months after I was born, uh, my parents uh, we moved to Astoria, Queens, uh, where we lived in an apartment there for about twelve years, and then. We shortly after that moved out to Queens Village. Um, we were there probably a little bit longer at that location at, uh, until 2006. Uh, so for a long time, uh, yeah. And even though I went to uh, went to school uh, and lived in Buffalo uh, for about 10 years, I would still find myself coming back home uh, to Queens Village and go hang out, uh, you know, with with the family. So, what was it like growing up in Queens at that time? In the 80s, it was probably like, I mean, I, had, I, I remember like for my parents, they were very uneasy uh, just because they were just very super protective of me uh, and just worried about like you know, being attacked or anything like that. Um, I think just hearing the news so much about crime in the 80s uh -huh. uh, under the Ed Koch years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they were just super protective of all of us and just trying to shield us as much as possible. Uh, so going out to play wasn't really something that we really, that was really heavily encouraged much. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, only until I'd say like around fifth grade, I would say like uh, when my parents, when I finally learned how to ride a bike, uh, around that point then like my uh, parents got finally bought a bike for me and I would still like learn, learn to like get around mm -hmm. uh, so I mean that was probably like probably the first signs of maybe like myself getting active in some mm -hmm, way mm -hmm. yeah and I would just find myself sometimes on my bike uh, I guess I'm old, I guess I'm old enough that I could finally disclose <laughs> and then I would go bike a little further out uh, uh, well, well, like most kids yeah you know you gotta <laughs> test your limits uh, it's weird for my parents to find this out now <laughs> Statue of limitations probably over by now. I think so. 
<laughs> um, yeah, but I, I mean, I would just do that and just kind of just explore. I wouldn't go too far out into like, I mean, I would still like go like maybe like, uh, I would go at least like a, like at least a, a couple miles and then turn around and go right back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was really it. And then, uh, and then once we got to Queens Village, then that made me even want to bike even more. I, I would discover Alley Park and just really took advantage of the, of the routes around there uh -huh. and just bike through there, uh, would bike further out into like Floral Park and, and just, and just barely getting over Nassau okay. County. All right. So what high school did you go to? I actually went to Brooklyn Tech High School. Oh, so, so cool. Yeah. Now, that's a, um, you got to pass an entrance exam, right? Yeah, it's one of the three specialized uh, science high schools, okay. along with uh, Stuyvesant and Bronx High School of Science. So you have oh, to take the... okay. So you are pretty good at mathematics and the sciences at that time? Uh, yeah, it was good enough. It was funny. In, uh, in junior high, I won math B's in seventh and eighth grade. So I think at that point, I like realized, I, th I think I'm good at this. That's a great school. Still is. Still is, yeah. So, so what college did you decide on? SUNY Buffalo. I just wanted to just get, get out of the city or just, you know, just try to do something completely different. Uh -huh. Eventually, I did graduate, uh, but uh, with a degree in math, uh, but then I did a my finish with a minor in English. When you're in college, you're just figuring everything out yeah, as you're yeah. going along. But no, I just started taking a bunch of English classes and then uh, started taking a lot of film classes too. Just really learning about like genres. So mm -hmm. just, I was just really big into that. And yeah, and then and then I had enough classes at that point. It was, there was like, might as well just make it a minor. <laughs> so, oh, okay, well, yeah. Sony Buffalo, nice and cold up there. So did you take up any uh, any skiing or any cold weather sports? No, I never really had a reason. I always just looked at, like, I would look at other friends that would do it. I'm like, okay, well, that looks like fun. <laughs> but never really, it never really struck me as anything remotely interesting. Um, yeah, no, I, th I think while I was, like, in school uh, up there, I would I would either just, like, hang out with, uh, friends in my in my dorm room, or uh, and just kind of do that, and then just like discover music, and just that was really it. And okay. read, uh, and then I uh, joined a co-ed service uh, fraternity, uh, and once I turned twenty one. That all combined into uh, just a little more active, uh, a little more of an active role, uh, not just in terms of the fraternal aspects, but more uh, actually a little bit on the service side too. Go to parks and clean them up or right. deliver food to, to the shut ins, that kind of stuff. Yep, that, doing that, volunteering at, at like. Uh, lo local drives uh, for the local PBS station there. Um, yeah, and then volunteering for like any kind of events oh, that good. needed. That's so good. it was, that's good. So that's it was good. good. During college, you needed to decide to what you're going to do the rest of your life. <laughs> your parents probably were interested at that time. So yeah. what was the process of your first career move? I really had no set plan on what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, when, I think at the, in the midst of still like even trying to go through my math math program, I was still kind of iffy about it. Uh, not even sure if I wanted to still stick with math. Even around two thousand and one, I just had like I just I was sort of in this like turning point where I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. At that point, I think over time, I, my weight had get, like I'd really had a big weight gain. I started using an inhaler more. And I just finally, like one summer, uh, one day in the summer of 2001, I was back home in Queens. Uh, I honestly was considering dropping out. Uh, cool. Yeah, I just like really, like, like nothing was fun. Yeah, okay. uh, just like doing all that. I was just like really, like I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. So, um, so then one day I just like pulled myself off from the couch and I was just like, just really despondent. I'm like, okay, I need to do something, like just something. Uh, and let me, and I just told myself like, okay, let me just try to run for one minute. <laughs> just try to like, please just like, you can do this. Like okay. just telling myself this, just run for a minute. All right, just do this. Like, and, like looking at like a second hand watch or like a, uh, like and no digital or anything like that and just timing it and then go. Uh, and I would just go sprint from like to all the way to as far as I could to the end of the block uh, a little further in. And, and then I saw the time was up. It was like a minute two uh -huh. <laughs> and it was like, I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, all right, so this is good. I can do a minute. Now let me try two minutes. <laughs> and then I tried, and then eventually I was like getting so out of breath because I burned myself out going so all out like that. Uh -huh. And I thought, okay, well, all right, I got a ways to go. <laughs> 
but I I had to start somewhere, uh -huh. and, and I think like and very slowly, I think I just kind of just started like doing something at, at that at that point. Okay, because you wanted to overcome your your weight. You said you you ballooned. Yeah, when I started in college uh, as a freshman, I was just a little barely over 110 pounds, uh, and then I think I did the freshman 15, but then I still kept gaining another 15. Like I mean, if it was a class, I easily got A's. And then when I turned 21, that probably didn't even help things even further because then I really discovered like, oh, I could take advantage of drinking now and then and then and then like finding like oh yeah there, there are places i can go to now that i have a car i can like i can like go hit up fast food places late at night oh, okay. uh, and it's like and, and all, all right. this really didn't oh, okay. contribute well, at some point there was an epiphany where you made a breakthrough i know you started the one minute <laughs> yeah <laughs> all out and then <laughs> where, where was the breakthrough when I started running slowly, I think I just realized, like, I, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Like, I just have to, like, like this is, I know this isn't the sort of thing that's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. But if I have the patience enough to, like, focus each day with, like, one little thing and make one small increment, you know, over time, I know I, I can make this happen. Mm -hmm. And I would make changes with my diet. I would, like, focus on, like, maybe... Uh, learning to run like five like for five minutes straight or like 10 minutes straight i would try to some, do something new like use the elliptical for the first time which the first time you'd use that that is a nightmare <laughs> that's hard it was yeah it was a long-term process yeah but then what was your first did you do a 5k that you finally said all right i'm getting you know i'm I'm making some kind of breakthrough here. Yeah, so I was interning uh, at this uh, company uh, in a suburb uh, in Buffalo uh, for a company called Ingram Micro. Uh, they were like a software distributor. Uh, I always do like 15 hours a week there. And they had this philanthro uh, philanthropic committee where if you signed up for a 5K race, uh, they would cover the fees for it. Um, and they had, a, I was walking by their office and they had this brochure uh, for like a, a local 5K turkey trot. Uh, and it was like, a, it was like the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Um, and it was like a month away, but I just saw this and, and I, and at the time, I was still like on doing like modestly well with my with my my own workouts, but it, like I thought I needed some way to like push myself. Yeah. Uh, so I saw this 5K and I thought I could try this. How did it go? Okay. <laughs> this is a 5K in Buffalo. Yeah. It, the, was it freezing? It was a little chilly. It wasn't like freezing cold. It was actually pretty good. I didn't really have like the best running apparel. Like I had like maybe the baggiest of of uh, sweatpants, uh, sweatshirt. Uh, I really had like these cross trainers uh, that I had like year, like for a few few years, and really had like proper running shoes. Uh, I yeah, it was sort of a nightmare of a run uh, in a way, only because like I. It was it was a good and a bad thing. For one thing, I discovered the sweatpants I put on uh, suddenly were a little looser than than usual. So it was kind of a blessing in a way in finding like, okay, I'm actually making some progress here. I am losing weight. It's bad when you're finding out that they're starting to sag while you're running. <laughs> So, yeah, so a few minutes in, they're sort of like, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm feeling good. I'm like, and then I'm like, oh, they're sliding a little bit. Ugh, okay. Okay. Uh, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should pick this up a little bit. Oh, nope, I'm sliding a little bit. Yeah. So. All right, well, it sounds like a fun run. You're, you're talking to yourself. Uh, you're doing all this. You're, you're checking out your clothing. You're, you're learning. And meanwhile, then my laces on my shoes are, are coming okay. undone. <laughs> like all this, I'm dropping like my, I didn't really have a spot to hold like my keys so like so that was also and so i put it in my pants and that was even dragging my pull, almost pulling my pants down even more sounds like i would have read a <laughs> you know a good blog a good uh, short story on, on your first 5k let's see this was in 2002 so i was 24 <laughs> so you were 24 years old yeah when i when i when i did that 5k okay. and i finished it in a little over 45 minutes 45 minutes all right so well, that's uh Slow, but, yeah. <laughs> but you know, you, you, start start one, you know, considering, considering you weren't wearing the best outfit and in the weather. Yeah, I just thought I 
no, I can do a lot better than this. Okay. Like I can, you know, obviously okay. dress a little better, get better shoes, okay. train, and then really push okay. this. Well, obviously, you did that, and I think you went on to two marathons. What would, tell us about your first marathon. Over a year later, um, around January, my training was was done going pretty well. I like I had more lost. A lot of that weight at that point i was running like five ten k's um i would say around the winter time though around january i think my training was starting to like go down a little bit so then go back i'm like thinking i need i need some kind of incentive here i gotta step this up the, the longest distance i'd raced in at that point was a 10 mile race and i didn't really push myself i mean i pushed myself but i haven't really but i needed to like find a way to step this up so then i looked ahead and i saw that that the buffalo marathon was coming uh and it was like five months away memorial day weekend and I looked at this, I thought, okay, I could sign up for this. I'll give my, I have more than enough time to train for this. Doing it all by yourself? Doing it all by myself. Are you doing any research online? I pretty much like looked on the internet a lot. I read, I read Runner's World. I uh, went through their website a lot. I, I, I was at that point where actually I had my own subscription to it. So I, I was reading that up a lot. I knew like Hal Higdon. Uh, I was like checking his, uh, reading his website okay. a lot and reading his books. Uh, so I would use his program. That's what I used on there for my first mar uh, first couple marathons. And that's what I used on there and just okay. like stuck to just doing okay. that. Got to the starting line of Buffalo. Sounds like injury free. You, you were a sensible person in, in your training because you did it. You know, you would listen to your body. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I would go through. I mean, there were, on occasion, I wouldn't say it was like completely injury free. I mean, that would, I would have times where maybe I would have like issues, like any other runner, with like uh, pain on one knee or, or anything else like that, yeah. or IT band issues. And I think, like most other people, I think it's still kind of like an iffy thing. Not sure where you would, <laughs> okay. where you would, where you would go to. And I think I started going to this uh, running store in Buffalo called Fleet Feet, uh, going there and learning about, uh, like asking them questions. And, yeah. and that's where that's, I also got my first pair of running right. shoes. Good segue into uh, Jack Rabbit's down yeah. the road. So how did you do in your first marathon? Good. I, I mean, I, I finished in three hours, 39 minutes. Oh, that's uh, excellent. So yeah. I mean, I was... that's a big improvement over a 45 minute 5k. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh yeah, I, I I I pushed myself pretty hard on there. And my goal at that point was like to the point where I mean, it, I did really well uh, from a running standpoint, like in terms of my speed work that I was placing in eight, my age groups in like five to five Ks, which at the time I, I was still like kind of blown away by. But okay. it was like, um, yeah, but it was like, uh, but then I once and those kind of also encouraged me as well because I, I saw all these awards. I would come in like second or third and sometimes first. And I would see like people who I recognized at those races and I would like keep an eye for them. And then and that would push me. So oh, like okay. then those races would, would also right. double speed work for me. All right. Sounds like you have visions now because everybody does at some point especially with that kind, of, kind of pace, of being Boston qualified. Yeah. It was always a process, but I think you made it too. So how, did, how was your plan to get it to Boston? Yeah, I ran a really fast uh, 5K, uh, uh, and I remember typing the numbers just for the f just for fun uh, into like one of those like time algorithm calculators, predicting like well, marathon like, time. Yeah, did that, and and it estimated like uh, like a marathon equivalent of like 309, 310, which Excellent. which at that time. Uh, the qualifying stands were different at the time. So, like, if you if you were male, uh, eighteen to thirty four, you needed three ten or faster. Uh, so I looked at that. I'm like, oh wow, I that is a cusp. Yeah. So I looked at this. I'm like, hmm, you know, I could get, I could give this a shot. Which marathon did you Boston qualify for? It took about it over a year after that, but uh, I eventually did it on my fifth marathon, fourth try, uh, at the Niagara Falls Marathon. I finished in 3:08, uh, and uh, yeah, I and I made it. So it was well, like pretty how did thrilled. you feel when you did that? Oh, I was like so overwhelmed. It was like incredible. I I was like when I saw like when I saw when when I started coming near the finish line and seeing like my time and it was like 3:08. Uh, I like just like was screaming, "I'm going to Boston! I'm going to Boston!" And uh, and uh, it was like and and made it across. And uh, there was this one runner who I actually was like trying to like uh, like who who was like in this orange jacket who I saw since like mile 
15 yeah. uh and i saw or even earlier i i remember like just looking at him all, all the way far in the distance and i remember like midway through the the marathon thinking like okay i gotta track i gotta get him like you could he had orange we able to track or follow him right that, that <laughs> it was it was a blessing but i saw him and i'm like okay keep you like don't lose sight of him and and Did you guys become friends or that was just uh at one time, it was the one time. But okay. I saw him, and uh, with each mile, he was getting close. I was getting closer and closer, and all I thought was like, "Get to him, get to him." And by, like by the very end, I was just right behind him. Uh, and uh, so he never knew that he was your pacer. No. <laughs> uh, but afterwards, I went up to him and uh, uh, like immediately and tapped his shoulder, said, "Like I, because of you, I'm going." And, uh, the and, yeah, and 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 he said, "Oh, you, you know." I didn't do anything. You did all that. <laughs> like, yeah, you were you did you did all the hard work. So I, I mean, so yeah. Of and course, sometimes pacing is uh, it's important. And yeah, it was a good word for you. Okay, so so obviously you went to Boston. So how did that go? Really good. I uh, my, I finished that uh, in three hours five minutes twenty nine seconds. Oh my God. So you did uh, a yeah. three minute improvement. Yeah. Boston is much harder, I would have presumed, than Niagara Falls. I'm not sure. It's yeah, it's harder training wise, uh, especially when you're living in the winter in Buffalo. Uh, so you're. Uh, I found myself do, I long runs. I would still make my drive out to this section uh, outside in Orchard Park, where you, I, where there were had these huge steep hills, and I would do all my long runs there, okay. even when I got well, the weather was bad. Uh, but and sometimes like if okay. it need well, you're be, still training in Buffalo. That's amazing. Yeah. And following how Higdon's advice, he was still still doing that. Yep, still sticking with the program. I was probably doing like more of an advanced program at that point. And then uh, once in a while, if I if need be, I would do like my workouts on the treadmill, which I hated. Oh, okay. uh, I still hate the yeah, treadmill, okay. but, but it's... you did it when you when you had to. Yeah. All right, and you're still doing a solo. You weren't part of a team. No. And yeah. Did you have any? close friends that were working with you? Or you were a lone wolf at, at that point? I was pretty much just a lone wolf on there. Like, I didn't really have, like, a like any anyone that really would train with. I mean, on occasion, I would have, like, a, like a friend or two that might, that that would ask me to, to run with them. Yeah, okay. um, well, that but, takes yeah. a lot of willpower to do that on your own. So how did you make the leap to Jackrabbits? I was sort of in between jobs, just looking for uh, looking for something on there. I had a friend uh, who I knew who was the assistant manager at the Upper East Side store, uh, and uh, just I, I said I, I've got a lot of years of running on me. I, I I think I could be of help here. They had an opening for like a like a, a retail staff person. Okay, so, so. You, were they selling clothing, selling uh, and shoes, and yep. shoes. Yep. But then but then they realized you had talent in pacing. And, and leading a group. Yeah, that took some time too. I think it happened eventually, like, like almost a year later. I think once they discovered that, I think like eventually started uh, leading some of their group runs at the store, um, and uh, also doing uh, some coaching some of the running classes as well for Jack, Jack Rabbit. Rabbit. Yep. Yeah, so, Jack so. Rabbit is famous for having having all those training groups. Yeah, it's interesting because. You know, Jack Rabbits is a store, but they didn't have a running club per se. They supported all the runners yep. and they held classes, not only in running, but also in swimming. Yeah. You also became a pacer for a different store. They didn't sell clothing, they sold burgers. <laughs> Shake Shack. Shake Shack, yeah. So I'm going, wow, here's a store that sells, that's into the running, but don't have a club. <laughs> here's a store that sells hamburgers yeah. and french fries, delicious food, yeah. but they had a running club. Yeah. So how did you discover them, or did they drafted you? How was that? A little over a year in, while I was at Jackrabbit, I well, one of my duties I had was a, a outreach a events coordinator, uh, where I would help schedule events at the store. Uh, and one of the and I wanted to try to bring some fun into it. Um, and one of the things I wanted to try to do was um, kind of a fun run, where like a lot of times, also the fun the runs that we do, people would just go do the run and then and head out. And I kind of wanted to still like instill that sense of community and have people hang out and just and not have people feel intimidated. So I was looking around and I looked online. I saw that Shake Shack, uh, they had a running group called Shack Track and Field, uh, and it was based on Philadelphia. Started there, and uh, I reached out to 
uh, the general manager at the Upper East Side Shake Shack, uh, Meredith, super wonderful, sweet woman, uh, and and said, hey, uh, so I have this idea. I'd like to do a run with you guys, if that's cool. It'd be like a five-mile run. Uh, and then afterward, after the run, we fit, we head over to Shake Shack. Uh, we Is there anything we can get, like a free drink or something it's like yeah we can get like a yeah you totally can do that i'm like like are you you serious like so so you're responsible for bringing from philadelphia to the new york area it started from that run and and then that first run we did it we had like a little over like 50 people come to this run like it was like well known because you know i guess it was just word of mouth or something like that we i mean we did as much as we could like uh like promoting it on there but like yeah it was like huge turnout for this five mile run a free shake uh we had people who who came to the run who weren't even runners uh like just doing this they so. just love the name the thought shake shack yeah, yeah i like that yeah, yeah. eventually you got the shirts oh, i mean yeah. the whole you would got the whole nine yards yeah and i worked with uh shack track and field and the founders on there uh super awesome people there they just really were like i i like i would do whatever i could and promoting the heck out of it um and just and to be super supportive to all the people that would come up like the first timers um Especially people who like who might be new to running, just because like this but is kind of experienced in... hamburger eaters. <laughs> I mean, that may... isn't that all. Isn't that all of us though? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think vegetarian showed up? <laughs> I mean, I mean oh, they, they do have veggie burgers though. They have a really oh, good really? shroom. They yeah. have a shroom burger. Uh, yeah. So it's like a fried mushroom that like where like the cheese explodes out. Ooh. So. You're making us hungry. I know. <laughs> okay, so now Shake Shack, I think they, on a regular basis, like every once a month, they yep. have a race at different locations. Different locations. They have three different locations. Uh, one at the Upper East Side. Uh, they have one down uh, at the Battery Park, Battery Park City, and they have a third one down out in Dumbo in Dumbo, Brooklyn. Dumbo in uh, Brooklyn. Yep. Um, and you still help them out? I still, still I'm, I'm still there at the Upper East Side uh, once a month. I we, It's every second Tuesday of the month. And you're one of the, the uh, pacers? Yep, I'm one of the run leaders there helping pace. Yeah, so it's it's okay. um, usually there. Okay, well, now that you're mentioned at the beginning, you're now with the front center part of New York Roadrunners. Yeah. I imagine one day you might combine your two loves, Roadrunners and Burgers, and have a fun run with the two. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, yeah, it would be pretty awesome <laughs> if there's a way. <laughs> uh, I have a feeling with your talents, you can do it. Well, listen, on that note... Thank you so much for dropping in. Thank you so much for having me. This was really fun. Mm -hmm.